Samantha Ashley for FD 1111 Ministries. Welcome back. If you are a regular, if not, then hello. My name is Ashley. I'm the founder of FD 1111 Ministries, and I am here for the new moon in Aries energy. So stay tuned. I will give some angel recommendations. I will go over some of the astral influences. You can also check out the blog post listed down below. If you're listening to this on the podcast, you can check out the video that will also be listed in the show notes. And all of the links that I mentioned will be in the description box or either in the show notes. This is the astro prophetic reading for the new moon happening in the sign of Aries to be exact at 11 degrees of Aries, which is in the second deacon of Aries, which is ruled by the sun and it's Leo triplicity. So Leos could feel an extra boost of energy as well as Aries during this time. This is the esoteric new year. This is the real new year, the beginning of the new year. So happy new years to all of you guys out there. You guys make sure that you do stay tuned until the very end. You can check out the blog posts listed down below, either in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast or in the description box if you are watching this via YouTube. In that blog post, there will be some journal prompts for the Aries season, as well as specifically for this new moon energy. I do encourage you to stay tuned to the very end because I will go over a brief ritual for this new moon energy. Aries is ruled by the tarot card of the emperor and the emperor is a ruler. So esoterically, a ruler, a leader represents the measurements. So how does a person measure up? to certain standards but esoterically we're talking about ruler rulership any types of references to authority is measured in numbers so numeric value a leader a ruler all deals with measurements and those measurements and those numbers tap into astrological perspectives so the emperor in my upcoming deck is the king the ruler of Dawid aka also known as King David and King David is an Aries energy a fiery but humble entity well energy we can tap into his wisdom tap into his divine authority with this Emperor card we have rulership represented by the color of red this is a fire energy but also a warlike energy This specific new moon happens in the second deacon of Aries, which is ruled by the tarot card, the three of wands. And the three of wands is that of victory, success, travel. It also is the energy of authority. This is a calculated mentor, a calculated project, something that you could have been working on that required a a perspective of deep thought, but also planning to take action. So this could also be business trades and spiritual preneurs, entrepreneurs of any type. This could be even starting a business or starting an endeavor. This card is the three of flames. And with the three of flames, this is about the prophet Elijah. As he was about to transition, AKA the ascension that he handed over his cloak, which is a magical cape, and initiated the prophet in training, Elisha. So in that whole situation, what happened was that there were two fiery horses ascended him to the third heaven or to the heaven, heavenly realms. So this is symbolic of us being inducted into another spiritual hall of fame, inducted into another level of the heavens. And the heavens represents the higher level of consciousness. I found this story to be very interesting because it deals with magic. It deals with divination. If you are interested in learning about biblical divination, I do have a link listed down below, a PDF download with like about 25, over 25 forms of divination with scriptures that you can find in that PDF. All right, so let me see where I'm supposed to go. So one thing that I really um, found interesting about this specific energy just besides it's the kickoff of the lunar new years as well as the real new years the traditional new years aries energy represents the ram that pushes through all of the energies throughout the different houses the different phase of the zodiac of the mazaroth to give one the energy the foresight the fuel to go through those different transitions so we just left out of pisces season and pisces season was the emptying out now we're ready to embark on a new phase. 
is a new astrological lunar cycle. There's 13 lunations in a full annual cycle. So that is the number of feminine, of the divine feminine energy. So with that divine feminine energy, we are really tapping into our divine feminine essence, the part and the aspect of ourselves that are divine feminine. So our intuition will be heightened. Um, our willpower, our magnetism will be heightened at this time. So working with these different lunations, the 13 cycles that we're able to align with our intuition, our inner tuition and align with our divine purpose. So Aries is esoterically connected to Mercury and Mercury, of course, is the voice, the communication of the gods. And it's also the modality, the avenue of healing, divine healing. So with this Aries new moon that we can tap into their inner child healing, tap into any forms of healing that can come through the avenues of receiving downloads. This could be downloaded healing. This could be someone laying their hands or sending you direct energy if you're open to that. Intercessory prayer could be um, something that you could work with. Uh, they also call it Reiki healing. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, distance healing, forming groups and building the energy and sending someone healing. You could also be sending someone healing or either receiving healing. Another thing is that Chiron is still in the sign of Aries and Chiron is the wounded healer. And Chiron always reminds me of like, it reminds me of a couple people, but it's specifically Apostle Paul in the New Testament because he had an affliction, a physical affliction, much like Chiron, that the divine spirit, the most high God, would not take from him to keep him humble so the thing about chiron is that chiron had a very tragic story very talented a natural healer um, intuitive and he could heal everyone besides himself so i think about apostle paul and the connection between the two so with chiron and aries that we have learned over this cycle of that whole transit about our inner child woundings, things that started from the very beginning. It could have even been in the womb. It could have been even before the conception that, um, so I'm gonna explain that. Let me explain that real quick. So before inception, you're, you were a seed and the seed was encased in both your mother and your father. So they would say that the man carries the seed <clears throat> and the woman is the womb, but both really carry the seed. And um, the reason why is that the man carries like the physical seed and the information that it will be housed inside of the womb. But through the cycle, the feminine cycle, which does align with the moon, that she also carries a seed, too. And she has not only just to carry the seed physically within her, but she also has to carry the masculine seed within her womb. So you could have actually for sure you received information downloads traumas etc from both parties both sides both aspects of yourself so the way of how to heal that is that you have to go through these different phases and it's a continual onion if you will peeling back the layers to get to the core but a really in this incarnation we will never really get to the core core because it's something that happens on the soul level we just do our very best as being spiritual beings incarnate incarnated into the physical realms to shed those physical layers if you will because we only experience our soul experiences things in the physical when we go back to the spiritual realms like there's no physical experience so we can heal as much as we possibly can in the physical realms and the human realms to make life easier while we're here. So this is just channel like information. I didn't have this in my notes at all. Well, another thing I'm gonna go to my notes. Okay. And another thing I find interesting about the glyph of Aries is that it looks like a woman's reproductive system. It, it sprawls out like that. I know it's a masculine fiery energy. However, it's also very feminine like so it's like The glyph is both the energy is masculine But it's also feminine at the same time. That's what like I, I feel 
it's like the fiery masculine energy but also like a fiery feminine energy so in this second deacon of aries the sun is exalted here like i was saying before that this is the house or the the sector the deacon of leo and leos and aries could be feeling this energy very prominently now but in this deacon specifically at the 19th degree that's where the sun is exalted but this is where we can really tap into our divine authority where we can really download like real pure source it energy like the the energy from the cosmos download it into our inner vessel and it becomes encoded in our dna so we live it out it's not just like okay i had a divine thought and i'm just going to try to align with it it's more so like we're being rewired being rewired for success some of the aspects we have the sun the moon chiron and mercury they're all joined together at this time of the new moon and what that is is like the direct clear communication of course from the heavenly realms from our angels from the angles from the astros that will give us a certain perspective that helps us to realize something to actualize something that's connected to inner child wounding we're able to communicate it better like you could have been so wounded by something that you went through these different phases first you didn't know even that you were wounded and then through another cycle you realize that something is off then you realize you were wounded then it was like something that you couldn't face but through this last cycle of chiron and aries that you're you're ready to face it you have faced it and now you're ready to share your personal testimony with other people and it doesn't bother you as much actually some of you guys maybe stepped may have healed so much that you're able to directly communicate you may even be doing healing work for some people that have experienced some type of childhood trauma last june and july you were confronted with this energy now just go back and look over if you keep a diary or a journal you could go back and look at some of the things that you wrote down and see how compare it compare your feelings your ideas your thoughts about yourself how the way you communicated with yourself and compare it to how you communicate and feel about yourself now feel about a, a specific topic an instance that happened in your life that was painful how do you feel and view that now because it's some form of healing that has happened since then. And that's because of this transit with Chiron and Aries, where we had to question those things. We were confronted with it. Some of that energy may come back up at this time. You may be confronted with the same person, a different person, but with the same attitude or the same situation. How will you handle that? And you're able to clearly directly address it sometimes through trauma we may give people an excuse to re to the reason why they did something and we may even excuse our own behavior through this last cycle we needed to address that we need we need that to be confronted so that real inner healing can happen you can master master i hear that decision so someone could have made a decision to cover it up, whatever it was, whether they did some type of afflicting of pain onto someone else or they were the receiving end of it. I feel like even people that afflict pain onto others, they hurt themselves. And they even, an aspect of them even hurts as they are hurting other people. I'm gonna pull from my new deck. I am making some adjustments. So this is the first print of it. I have um, the the team working on another, like making some edits to it. I'm adding some foil, some gold foil, etc. All that stuff like that. You'll see it when it comes. So I have to go through that process all over again. So that's the reason why I haven't opened up any pre-orders or anything like that. Because they're going to be slightly different. Okay, let's see here. I am a way maker. God is making a new way 
something you had never thought of before. And that's exactly this Aries energy, this new year, like things, oh gosh, I feel it. The promised land. Like I know I've been saying that for a while. Like what I, the reason why sometimes like it may sound like someone that's bringing a message may be a broken record or either your angels, your guys may, may have told you something months ago, years ago, even for some of you. And you're like, okay, you told me that last year. So what's that? Where is it? <laughs> and what I see and what I'm supposed to share is imagine being in the desert for years. You had an assignment, you know, you're supposed to go from one location that you knew you may have been born into it. You may have grown up into it whatever and that's your situation that's all you know you're supposed to leave that and go to this place this uh paradise and like you've been hyped up and so you go on this journey and then you're like okay we're about a week into this <laughs> um and where is it you know and imagine like imagine the thought process like you could have been going through a drought a a spiritual drought like you have been receiving those divine messages that keeps you encouraged like I think about sometimes when people would go um, listen to motivational speeches or go to church to hear a good word or whatever and I, I don't knock that at all but however they don't really take real substance from it to help them to go through the 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 desert before they get to the promised land because you have to make sure that you are fully loaded up like a camel loaded up with nutrients, spiritual nutrients, um, techniques to help you get through the desert, get through the dry land before you get to the promised land. Like they may have these, uh, get these messages and they are only filled up for that moment, but they have no real substance. I'm not saying the message doesn't, but what they gain from it, they may only take enough just to help them get through a couple steps. But you have to be able to stretch the word out, stretch the promise out to help you to help you be able to bridge the gap between where you came from and where you're leaving to where you're going. So imagine you have been traveling all this time, going through all these different. If you read the Old Testament and how in the book of Exodus and, and continuing um, how like they, they went through some stuff, but they seen some miracles along the way, though. So it was no denying. Um, and how they went through all these different things and they get right up to the promised land and they're so scared and so trapped in the old mentality that they're ready to reject it. They're ready to turn back and go back to where they came from. Like, think about that. Think about not just even if you don't believe the story, just think about your own personal situation, like the things that the most high God, your angels, your guides, whatever name you want to put on there on, on it. Imagine you've been brought through so much and you get right there to your blessing and you're, you're so shook. You're so afraid. You're so afraid of your own power that you are ready to turn back and go back to that same BS, to back to that same BS. And the divine spirit is like, no, I'm making a new way. This is a new way, a new beginning. Don't you dare back down from your power. Don't you dare back down from your anointing. Don't you dare back down from the promise that I have for you. And that's exactly what I see and what I feel. I feel like uh, what I see, I see like people that have been through something and they finally made it right up there to the finish line and they become so afraid. They're more afraid of the unknown than what they know that, that they have been through. And they, they uh, felt the spirit so much to leave to go on that journey. This could be someone that left a relationship that was abusive. I hear neglect. They could have left a job, left a, a home that they outgrown. And now they're like, well, what do I do? You left for a reason or you were called out for a reason. On the other side, I didn't even realize that I have, I am majestic. You are part of the majestic command. The majestic command is like royalty. Like you are of a royal priesthood. You have divine authority. 
So when you have divine authority, who do you answer to? It's only one to answer to. Only one. And it's all around. And it's also up. And it's below. As above, so below. It's all around. But however, it's not a person. You think about the royal family. Who do they answer to? Think about that. But however, you are of the majestic command. So you give commands. You give commands to the experiences in your life. You give commands to casting down any devil or lower vibrational energy that comes towards you. You have that royal command. They, everything in your experience is a peasant to your royal command. You got to think about it like that. Like if you're a queen or a king or a part of the royal court, who do you answer to? You know, like people should be answering to you and not from an egotistical standpoint, but from a standpoint of that any, any lower energy that you may be afraid of, you could cast it down. I did a podcast. <clears throat> couple months ago like when I started back up with the pod with the podcast and it was about casting casting in the Bible so when they say you have the the power to trample over scorpions and snakes and cast down that's what it's talking about casting <laughs> I'm about to go on a tangent <laughs> so casting casting is you using your willpower to manipulate things around you. Now, going to the entertainment industry, think about if you are the main character in your own film, you are the one that's casting. You're the producer, you're the writer. So you're casting the cast. A cast is a mold. So you are molding the cast and you're casting the cast to carry out your will. And that's the thing that we may not think about. That if someone is giving you a difficult time, you are playing the part in your own film. So how can you recast them? A couple other cards. And the Sabian symbol for uh, the 11th degree of Aries is a ruler of a country, an emperor or empress of a country. So stepping into your emperor, empress energy to cast, <laughs> to cast. You, the wand's energy is all about using your wand and your wand is your, your energy. Your wand is also really the way how you use your words, how you cast because casting is also with words too. When they cast, they cast spells, the way, the wording that you use. And the emperor is a dictator about your dictatorship, which you, the diction that you have that you use, your kids are casting spells. Maybe you should get into ophthalmology, looking up what words mean, looking up what your name means. I also feel like that maybe someone needs to have a second name. Like, for example, if you were born Kimberly, if you don't like that name, or either if you don't like what the name represents, or if you look up the meaning of the name, maybe the meaning of the name resonates with you and you can gain power from it. But if you cannot and you do not, then maybe you could have another name and that could be your casting name. Like if I'm Angelina Jolie, I don't know why I thought of her, but if I'm, if I was her, she doesn't play Angelina Jolie. She, she's the actress that plays another role. So if Kimberly is too timid to step into her Empress energy, she could always cast herself. She could recast herself, give herself another name, and that gives her another character to play. And you would, some people would say that's being phony. Mm, no. Some people have like, it's two different ways how you can use this. One is like if you are praying, casting, um, proclaiming, affirming, 
that you could use a different name and that different name can have a different energy of authority that gives you authority while you're doing that. Another way is that you just rename yourself in certain situations. Like if Kimberly cannot go into this meeting and be confident, then maybe, I don't know, Angela can go in there. Angela has the confidence. I'm gonna put on the character of Angela to go do this. And that could just be a different aspect of your personality when you have to do a certain task. Or you can just revamp you yourself altogether. Another thing too is like our physical identity is just an identity. Like when you have an ID card, it just says your name and some information that somebody else has told you is your information. And you became informed that that is your personal information. So you get in formation with that. What you can do is just give yourself a whole nother identity and you can ask your guys to, to let you know, who am I? What is, who, who, what's my name supposed to be? Like, what is my divine name? Like, what is the sound, the frequency? Who am I supposed to be when I come here? We have the high priestess right on the money. We have the three of swords in the reverse. Someone could be getting over, this card jumped, could be getting over a heartbreak. Also here, a financial, um, financial, like they were in a certain financial situation and it could have brought a lot of hardship. We have here the, what is this? The six of pentacles in the reverse. They could have been getting out of an unfair relationship, unfair circumstances. This could have also been like that inner child wounding that I was telling you about, like born in a certain situation that was very painful. And now they're getting over it through their inner tuition. And um, that's the high priestess. Another way of how to look at this is that this is connected to finances and being able to get out of, it could be someone that's impoverished. Um, could be someone that needs a financial breakthrough or something that comes through monetarily. You, of course, will hear my babes. <laughs> and then we have here the Ten of Wands. And it came up in the reverse, however, with the High Priestess card. This could have been the couple. This could have been one person that's carrying the relationship. And if your back hurt from carrying all this weight, then put the weight down, okay? This is the time to do it, all right? Put the weight down, all right? Give your back a break, okay? Not break your back. Another way of how to look at this is that it's time to pick something up. When you drop a habit, then you have to immediately fill that energy, that space with something that you want. So drop a bad habit, pick up a good habit to fill in that space. This is an esoteric principle. When you remove negative energy out of a space, you have to quickly fill that space. Otherwise, another energy, some people say entities, energy entities, angels, angles, whatever, will come fill that space. This also could be decluttering your space. I know I have been doing a lot of stuff in my home, like getting rid of a lot of stuff, redecorating, all that all that jazz and everything so this could be a call for to empty out space because you got too much going on look at all that energy you got too much going on and you're blocking your intuition because it's like your mind is all over the place because it's too much energy all over the place it's like downsize 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 and when you downsize reset the temperature the energetic temperature in your space to open in uh, to, to welcome in openness Okay. Divine Spirit is saying, how can you welcome in those blessings, that a fresh anointing, if you already have your space filled to capacity? If you already have your mind filled to capacity, how can you let fresh ideas come in? If you are well, if you want to welcome in that new relationship, how can you do it when your schedule is already booked up with a whole lot of hot mess? I heard that mess. <laughs> okay. So you got to clear that off. So coming from the Angel Lunar Planner, I do have the Aries season downloads from this planner, or you can just pick up the whole planner. The divination for this month is Pyromancy and it's Bay Leaf Burning. And you can do it every morning or you can do it whenever you want to clear the energy or sometimes how the way I use them is more so to dispel negative energy like if i feel frustrated or overwhelmed 
or I feel like um, I have lack or I, I feel tired or anything that I may feel like I want to get rid of, I will write it the tip of the bay leaf on the left side and I will write what I want to get rid of laziness like I may feel lazy or I may feel overwhelmed I write it on on my bay leaf with a magic marker and then I take in my left hand because I want to get rid of it I take it in my left hand with my tweezers and I burn it and then I allow myself to release I release those ashes I usually just toss them I release them energetically by saying a quick prayer and I can dump them in the trash or either I take them outside and get rid of that energy and I feel a lot better so you can use that technique but if you want to bring something to you like abundance or whatever I turn where the leaf is the the end of the leaf like the part that we would that would be attached to the branch I turn that to the right side I write what I want like abundance peace rest <laughs> um, I write it on on the bay leaf one request per bay leaf and then I hold it in my right hand because I want to receive it and I burn it so you can use that every day if you want to for this month for the airy season and it taps into pyromancy I do have the scriptures listed in the description well actually I have it listed in the angel lunar planner or either if you want to just download the monthly which includes the new moon full moons for this month the monthly tarot spread journal prompts all of that stuff you can find that listed down below and it will also have like the the note of the monthly divination the emperor card is also associated with certain angels so if you want to get into working with angels i do have a full glossary in the angel lunar planner that's why i call it angel <laughs> as well um, because you can tap into working with angels using your tarot cards Arbael means God's compassion you can use it to tap into compassion Zorael is God the righteousness of God so if you want to tap into the righteousness I always think about it as the righteous path what is the path right for you see Lafiel prayer of God so if you want to strengthen your prayers how to pray you can work with that angel Samael is poison of God now Samael I like working with that angel I have done it for banishing and it's really good for I use it for the banish like negative thoughts well I have used them I use them like last year to work on like banishing negative thoughts um, like the, yeah, that's what I pretty much use them for like bad habits for banishing that's a really good angel or they they call it like a dark angel um, but like what that means is just something that you would use to banish or get rid of. I don't do it to like banish people or anything, just energies. Raguel is friend of God. I like to use that as um, harmony and fairness in relationships and how to tap into justice and orderliness and harmony in relationships. Micah Dael means grace bringer to bring grace <laughs> helps with confidence new beginnings that also is like of course aries energy it gives courage and love so if you feel like you're holding back in love you can work with that angel and that is all associated with the emperor card jiri Mael, i think i'm pronouncing that one correct means mercy of god angel helps with forgiveness mercy showing mercy to others and having others show you mercy if you have done things to offend them that's a really good energy to work with during this new moon especially as we have um, the Chiron and Aries and we want to work with our inner child wounding you probably have already done some of that work but this is another good way of how to tap into that to show mercy and to receive mercy helping people with forgiveness removes anxiety sadness and negative thoughts ariel or ariel whichever however you pronounce it lioness of god so you can tap into nature healing secrets of nature fairies elementals and elementals are in the bible as well as fae or fairies rejuvenates protects animals um also helps to heal animals too besides the new moon the best time to work with these angels energy is on Tuesday because Aries is ruled by Mars but however I also have worked with some of them on Saturday on Saturn day Saturday this depends if you're like using um, like Samuel or Samuel 
Samael, however the way you pronounce it is spelled a couple different ways. You can work with him on Saturn day, on Saturday, because you're dispelling. That's a good day for to dispel things. So I hope this was helpful. Another thing too, I, I just heard like Sunday. Sunday too, because um, Aries is fire energy and the sun of course is the ultimate ball of, of fire energy in our in our current solar system so you can also use this if you cannot get to it on tuesday or either on the new moon you can also work with them on sunday you can find the list of, of angels and stuff in the angel lunar planner for this aries new moon i have a special ritual planned that i'm going to do with for myself but I want to share it with you guys. So what I plan to do is to set the energetic tone for the rest of these lunations. This is the esoteric new year and this is the first new moon of this year. So I am going to take some water and I'm going to boil it, preferably distilled water or spring water. I'm going to boil it and I'm going to mix in my best water. You can find this on my site. And I'm going to mix that in and because it has sacred salts in there and some other ingredients. I'm gonna mix that in inside of the water while I am saying and reciting my intentions. Then I'm gonna set it out during the new moon. It happens at 2.24 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'm going to take that water and I'm gonna give myself a spiritual bath. I'm going to take and put it in some spray bottles, spray it around my house, as well as cleanse and purify all of my spiritual tools. And after I take and do that, then I'm gonna light a candle, a white candle, and I'm going to allow my space to be purified. With that spray bottle of water, you can keep some of that water if you wanted to for to use on other moons or whenever you want to clear whenever you want to clear your space this is a great a great way of how to purify your space and set the energy for the spring for the summer for the new season and even for the rest of the year you can use that spray bottle if you so choose to guys for tuning in you can find all the links down below and i will talk to you guys on the next one peace